Hello drummers and other creatures. This one is going to be a follow-up to the recent video I made introducing ways to develop our coordination using a samba pattern, the sort of archetypal ostinato of the feet, playing the bass drum and the hi-hat like this. We kind of know that as the, the bog standard samba pattern. And we're going to count takadimis. This is what I did in the previous video, so I don't know if I need to explain it really, but we're, we're going to count in takadimis. We're going to count our sixteenths as takadimi, 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 takadimi. And you can think of that as a 4-4 four, four thing, 1 iana, 2 iana, 3 iana, 4 iana, or a 2-4, 1 iana, 2 iana, 1 iana, 2 iana, depending on what feels easy. And in the previous video, I demonstrated how you can work out how to coordinate um, various patterns on what I'm calling the takadimi matrix. We've got the four syllables takadimi, which represent, in this case, our sixteenths. doesn't have to, one iana, two iana. And within those counts, we can play or not play any of those counts. And there are 16 options for playing or not playing those counts, right? You've got all four takadimi, you could play all four sounds, you can play no sounds at all, or anything in between. I think there are six combinations of two sounds played, uh, four combinations of three sounds, uh, four combinations of one sound. Does that all add up? Yeah, maybe something like that. Um, but let's have a look. So again, the first video, we just went one hand at a time. I'm doing things one hand at a time. It might not feel like music it's it's really um well it can do but it's 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 an exercise it's something to help you focus just on how you're coordinating when you're playing this famous pattern there's quite a lot of business going on with your feet and then there's so many different ways that intersects with your hands so it's a really great way to develop the um the coordination just generally between your hands and feet now uh this time we're going to cover the same sort of patterns and I'm just going to randomly uh, throw out some patterns and I'm going to include a, a PDF just with the all 16 of the options available. Um, Benny Greb made a whole book about it. Uh, can't remember what it was called now, sorry Benny, um, but there's a great book where he, he shows you lots of different ways to approach uh, learning how to play these different um, combinations of 16ths and then also in uh, sort of triplets as well. That's a whole other topic. So in this quick video, hopefully it's quick, uh, I don't trust myself really, but in this video I'm going to show you how to then move on and start playing these patterns using our, our two hands, alternating singles in some way. And we're not going to be too fussy about which hand plays which notes, although I'm, I quite recommend trying to stick to a formula of the uh, numbers in the ands being on the right hand, or ta and d if we're saying takadimis, and the ka and the mi, or the e's and the r's being with the left hand, because it can help keep a flow going. But some people find that's quite useful to worry about at the very beginning of a process like this, and some people just want to get on and work out the rhythmic issues and patterns, and then think a little bit more about how the sticking is going to work afterwards. Uh, everybody's different, and the way you want to work on this it's kind of up to you to discover. So I'm going to not worry too much about my sticking, but I've sort of automated it to some extent as well. Right, so I guess we can approach this from just one at a time. We're starting off just playing the ta, and then the ka, and then the d, and the mi, right? So the first exercise we're gonna do, I'm just gonna play four of each option, the Taka dimi, 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 taka dimi. And because we've got some space, I'm not going to worry about whether my left or my right hand plays whichever of these. Right. So let's get our bass drum pattern going and playing the bass drum. Uh, or the, the foot pattern on its own uh, gives us an opportunity to also recognize the existence of the option of not playing anything in the takadimi. sound of each and you might want to move on and do a, a different pattern 
or you could already start improvising around the drums with that, using whichever hand feels like it wants to do something. So let's I'll play based on that again, but this time I'll just improvise single notes. You might find that you can get that going straight away and, and feel the enjoyment of being able to improvise on it. Next, we've got the, the various um, options of, of two strokes in our takadimi. Um, we've got what would be the eighth notes, takadimi, takadimi, the ta and the d, or the one and the an, one e ana, two e ana, and then we've got the e's and r's, one e an a, two e an a, takadimi, takadimi, and same thing, I'll start on the snare and just play these a little bit and then maybe we'll move them around the kit. And I'm going to, I might default to my left hand playing all the E's and R's and my right hand playing the numbers and the hands. Uh, as I said, that could be quite useful, but I'm going to try not to think about it too much once I start moving around the kit. improvise you, you notice that I'm allowing different things to happen anyway because when we improvise we want to let go of that kind of voice in the head that's saying oh are you doing this right are you doing it wrong we kind of we set an intention I, I'm planning to play these figures now I'm trying to practice these particular combinations of, of notes and so on and if that happens that's cool but if I can keep going and do something that's also fine but we, we don't want to be critiquing ourselves too much when we're doing an improvisation. Listen to yourself and see if it sounds nice or not. And either way, shrug and let it go. All right, there's a serious practice thing where you're trying at first to work out these patterns, but then let it go, relax. Next, we've got the, the, the various other sort of combinations of two strokes. So we've got the one E or the taka. We've got the uh, E and and then we've got the and uh, and then we've got the one, and then the uh at the end. So let me demonstrate. I'm, and, and I'm mixing up my counting and my takadimi. So I'll go back to takadimis. We've got takadimi, 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 takadimi. And when I'm first practicing that, I'm going to go right, left, right, left. Uh, and then we've got takadimi, 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 takadimi. I'm going to go left, right with that one. Then we're going to go takadimi, 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 takadimi. And finally, takadimi, 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 takadimi. Okay? And I'll just play each one a little bit and make myself comfortable with it. Maybe this time I'm going to stay with one pattern, play it on the snare for a little bit, and then move it around the drums just to demonstrate how that comes. And... Uh, I'm sort of blitzing through all this stuff just to put the idea out there. Remember, it might take you, if you haven't developed this coordination before, a long time to work any of this stuff out. So if, if this video ends up being 15, 20 minutes long, it's, it's going to take a bit longer than that maybe to get the hang of this if you've never done it before. If you're used to this sort of coordination, maybe this just gives you a, a little different way to frame how we can practice these things. And as you notice, you know, my coordination isn't perfect with uh, all of these variations. Very often, um, left hand and right foot don't, don't like working together. And there are some areas where I feel like I can do that really well and others where I think, oh, I, I could work on this figure a little bit more. So it, it, even if you are used to playing these things somewhat, it can help you focus in on areas that you might want to improve. Okay, here we go. Without further ado.
mine went blank. Oh, the last one. Then, I think finally it's the groups of three, so we can start off with takadi, 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 takadi. Uh, after that we've got um, takami, 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 takami. After that we have ta dimi, ta dimi, ta dimi, ta dimi. And then we've got ikadimi, kadimi, takadimi, takadimi. Um, that's an order that works for me, but you can do what you like. Those are all the threes, I think. Uh, don't worry, as I say, if I forgot any of these, you can go through the sheet and make sure you've got them all. You don't, you don't even have to be a completist with this stuff, to be honest. I think a lot of the time we get a bit too worried about covering all the possible options, but what I find um, from experience is, is more that we will tend to gravitate towards certain things that we like or that work for us and get really good at those. You don't have to be like fantastically good at everything despite what a lot of people say. So without further ado again, one, two, and one, two. into a little bit of trouble there but and I'm playing these fast right you don't need to play them at that speed you know whether um, the tempo is right for you or not uh, I'm not demonstrating these at the tempo that's going to work for everybody you might want to play them faster or, or slower if you haven't done this stuff before play it quite a bit slower um, I'll leave you to work that out once you've drilled these different options, and as I say, you can go through all 16 of the, the possibilities um, and, and sort of drill them in a nice methodical way, write it down in your notebook, make a little spreadsheet or whatever, or you can just sort of, uh, you know, once you understand the concept of these, these different rhythmic patterns based on four sixteenths, do some of them, get yourself comfortable with it. It's, it's really important to then uh, do some improvising. Like, I would encourage you to do some improvising at the earliest possible uh, opportunity and so once you know that you can play a bunch of these patterns now see if you can vary those patterns and uh, specifically what I would do is try and vary between going one hand at a time which you learned in the previous video and then doing the alternating hand stuff um, and try not to get too hung up on whether you're doing anything correctly or incorrectly when you're improvising there's no right or wrong just kind of play keep going uh, maybe the first few times you try this thing, Ugh, it's horrible, <laughs> whatever. That's cool. If you find the idea appealing, if, if, it's, if you can see how it's enjoyable, just do it. It's okay. Over a period of time, it'll start sounding better and better, and you'll develop a, a sense of being in control. And then you can polish and fine-tune things as much as you like. So a little bit of an improvisation just to finish this off. Uh, before I do that, I, I must market myself a little bit because I, I always forget... I'm a drum teacher and I can help you with your drumming and so I'm, I'm providing these videos uh, in order to sort of give a little bit of flavour uh, relating to my approach to teaching, my general philosophy of things and so on and so forth, a bit of more, more of that uh, on the way I hope um, and if you think I might be able to help you improve your drumming, help you get where you want to go, help you strategize or how to move to the next level or any of these things. If you think I, I seem like the kind of chap who might be able to help you improve your drumming in a way that you'd like, 
get in touch with me. My contact details are in the description box. And, uh, you know, you watch more of my videos. Obviously, make sure that you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And, um, you know, let me know if I can help you in some way. Otherwise, just leave a comment uh, under this video or any of my other videos and let me know what you'd like to see. Blah, 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 blurb over. I'll do a little bit of improvisation. I'm going to go one hand at a time from the original past before video, then I'm going to alternate my hands and then I'll just mess about a little bit. Let's see what happens. I didn't impress myself there, but you get the idea. I'm just, I'm just moving, moving my hands around, trying to get my body used to playing the ostinato, which I think derives from the Italian word for obstinate. It's a persistent pattern. I'm obstinately playing with my feet, letting my hands wander around and do whatever it is they want to do. Over time, that can help you develop, as I say, coordination relating to other types of music you want to play. And just ha have a fun time sort of soloing over that stuff. It allows you to uh, deepen your rhythmic creativity and it might rub off in your, your fills and your groove playing uh, and, and anything else you want to do. I hope that makes sense. Thank you very much for watching this. You may go off and practice. <laughs>